Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this lesson, we're going to study some fundamental principles about solving equations. First of all, what is an equation? It is something where you have an expression on one side, then the equal sign, then another expression on the other side, on the right side and left side. They are called the left side and the right side of the equation. And what was an expression? Well, expression is something where you have numbers, letters and mathematical operations such as addition and multiplication. Here's some examples of equations like this one for example 21 alone is an expression and then this 16 plus 5 is an expression. So this is an equation and it is a true equation at that because 21 indeed is equal to 16 plus 5. Over here I have a false equation. It is an equation because I have an expression on the left side then equal sign and then another expression. But it's a false equation. And here's an equation that we can't say if it is false or true it, because it has an unknown, the variable x there, okay? But this is the type of equation where you can try to solve it. You can try to find the value of x that would make this true. Here's another thing. This is not an equation, okay? Why not? Can you see? It's not an equation because there's no equal sign. It does not have expression equals another expression. Now how about this one? This is not an equation either because on this side of the equal sign there's nothing. There's no expression there. If I put zero there or something, then it is an equation. Though a false one again. So to solve an equation means that we find the value or values for the unknown or unknowns in the equation that makes the equation true. Let's try that here. For example, if I ask, is 11 a root of the equation that is here? It means, is 11 a solution to this equation? And we can check it by plugging 11 in place of x and checking if this equality holds true, like this. 11 squared minus 100 on this side. On this side we have 11 plus 10. Now we're checking if these two expressions are equal, so I'll put the question mark here. 11 squared is 121 minus 100, that would be 21. Over on this side I have 21. Yes, 21 is equal to 21. So yes, the answer is yes. It is a root of that equation. This equation has another root too which is negative 10. You can try that one too. Is 0 a root of the equation x cubed equals 1? Again, we do the same thing. We put 0 in place of x and calculate. Are these sides now going to be equal? Clearly not, because it's going to be 0 and 1. Those are not equal, so no, it is not. Can you perhaps see a root for this equation? What would x be to make this true? It's a pretty easy number. Actually, x equals 1 will work. Now we're going to look at how to solve some of the simplest of equations using a balance model and then learning some important principles about solving equations. Here, this is trying to be a balance or like a seesaw where on one side of the seesaw you have x and three positive counters. On this side, we have seven positive counters and they are balanced. So those two sides are equal or they are balanced. And one important principle about solving equations is that I can remove the same amount from both sides of the equation and it will still stay balanced, so to speak, or the equality will still hold true. For example, if I'm here, if I remove those three from this side, well then that would make this side of the seesaw lighter. And this will go up. But if I remove those same things from this side also, then it will stay balanced. The weights will be equal. So then I can see that x alone must equal 4 positive counters. Let me now write the original equation as it was. x plus 3 on this side, 7 on this side, and they are equal. And then when I remove 3 counters from both sides, I will see that x has to equal 4. So now I have solved the equation. Over here, I could use the same principle as far as removing two negative counters from both sides, right? 
And then I would immediately see that x must equal 3 negative counters, or negative 3. But I'll show you another principle here, which will prove useful just in a little bit. And that is that I can also add the same stuff to both sides of the equation. Let's say that I add this much to this side and the same amount to this side too. Now what happens is that... Okay, and let me write the original equation. It was x and negative 2 on this side and negative 5 on this side. That's how it was originally. But now when I add those two positives, you know, a positive and a negative are opposites of each other. They cancel each other. And this and this too. And over here, this and these cancel each other, become zeros as if. So now I am left with x alone on this side and over here negative 3. So it is solved. And this is where I'm going to use the same principle. This equation to start with is x and then added negative 3 equals positive 2. I will now add positive 3 to this side and to this side too, to keep it balanced. But the reason I add positive 3 is so that all these will get cancelled out. So add 3 positives and on this side too. And then these will cancel. Okay, leaving x alone, which is what we want. We always want to have x alone on one side of the equation. Then here is 5. Now, here's another principle that we need to note carefully, and that is, let me write the equation here first, it is 3x's on this side, and over here negative 6. And that is, I can divide both sides of the equation by some same number, and it will still stay balanced. In this case, if I reduce both sides to one-third of what they are now, then there is still a balanced situation, right? So if I take one-third of this, that means that this is removed and this is removed. If I take one-third of this, I remove this and remove that, then it still will stay balanced and x is alone now, so x equals negative 2. Here I'm trying to illustrate the fact that we can also multiply both sides of the equation by some number and it will still stay balanced. This is trying to illustrate half of an x, okay? So let's say that we double, we put the another half of an x over here, in other words, we put the same amount here as what is here already, and over here we do the same. If I put the same amount here as, it, as is here already, then I get the whole x. I'm doubling. And then over here I double what is there, so I get negative 6. My original equation was half of an x, and that equaled negative 3. And now I multiply both sides of the equation by 2, or I double, and then I get x alone equals negative 6. This is a mixed situation. I am doing this now to illustrate how we can use several of these principles in steps to solve an equation. This equation originally is 2x on this side and 1 positive counter equals negative 5. And now my goal is to have only x on this side. But first, my first step is to get rid of this positive counter on this side. And to do that, I can add a negative counter to both sides, right? That will stay, that will make it stay balanced. And that will cause these two to disappear. So now I have 2x alone over there, negative 6. Now I divide both sides by 2, or I take half of each side. Half of these would be, of course, just 1x left. This goes away. And then here, half of them are removed. So then that leaves x equals negative 3. And now the equation is solved. And lastly, in equation solving, it is always good that you check if you got the right answer. That means putting this solution, the root, and checking if it fulfills the original equation. If I put x equals minus 3 here, will I get a true equation? If yes, then this is truly a solution. 2 times negative 3. That's negative 6. Add 1. Yes, it is negative 5. So this solution checks and makes the equation true. Okay, in the subsequent lessons and videos we will look in more detail how to solve equations. I hope this was helpful.